please be seated. Good morning. Jesus, <clears throat> in this gospel, is described as the one who tied the strong man and who rubbed him. Because Satan himself is the one who guards what he is told from us. And Jesus took back what he is told from me. And Satan is now under our feet. And it only requires the true strong man who is our redeemer to redeem us from captivity of sin, from the captivity of the lies of the devil. In our gospel, Jesus was accused as the prince of demons. And Jesus said, I'm telling you, the enemy, my enemy cannot stand against me. If they are divided, when Satan rebelled against God, he had this campaign. And the book of Revelation says, one third of the stars of heaven was taken. And he joined the demonic forces, all the angels there, one third joined with Satan. And they rebel against God. And Saint Michael, the archangel, cast them into hell or to uh, from heaven. And they fall in Mount Hermon, as some of the theologians believe. But even in our first reading, Jebusites was boasting that they, David, cannot overcome them. Uh, that even the leapers and even the blind, he cannot touch them. But what happened? David overpowered them. In our gospel also today, Satan seems to be bragging and boasting and influence the minds of the Sadducees, the Pharisees, influence the minds of the politicians, the teachers of the law, the scribes, the Sanhedrin, all the leaders of Israel, he influenced them all. And in fact, Jesus said, if you keep on believing and walking under that influence, it is a sin against the Holy Spirit. Thus, cannot be forgiven. Such sin cannot be forgiven. The ongoing unbelief. If we continue to walk, the sinful ways, God cannot forgive us. If we keep on sinning and choose to live a sinful life and choose to eat the bait of Satan, then we cannot be forgiven. Yes, the forgiveness of God is every day. It's available, even your future sin. But if you continue to choose to eat the poison of the devil, in spite of the fact that God has offered his mercy, and his grace, and his forgiveness, <clears throat> but because of our abuse with God's grace, then we cannot be forgiven. Because we choose to eat the poison of Satan. But if we choose to, once and for all, turn away from our sin. That is why when Christ forgave the woman who committed adultery, he said, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. No more. If we still choose to eat poison, the lies of the enemy, then our sin is a sin against the Holy Spirit. 
and such sin will bring us to hell because we abuse the love, the mercy, and the grace of the Father. May so on. Mo ingon tao sa hay nga wa na may ngipon sa satanas. Wa na siya ga home. Testing eh. Testing eh. Some of the exorcists would define Satan as he's like a dog being tied on a tree. Mura siyang iro naghiktan. Kung ikaw kuno mo duol dana nga iro, imo gyud tuyuan og duol dana nga iro, paakon gyud kuno ka. That is why the Bible also describes Satan as like a roaring lion. Roaming like a roaring lion seeking for someone to devour. Kumpiyansa kang satanas, pila ka santo papa, pila ka kardinal, pila ka obispo, pila ka pare, pila ka diakono ng gibiya sa ilang ministry tungod kay kumpiyansa ra sila. I'm not saying that you have to respect Satan, but you have kaning dili man ta mag-respect, but dili ta maghatag og kumpiyansa ba? Ay mo kumpiyansa sa tong kontra. Kay he's been here for a thousand of years already. He studied and influenced the mind of Perus, the mind of Nebuchadnezzar, the mind of Semiramis, the mind of Nimrod, the mind of Herodes, the mind of the emperors, especially Nero. Sa inyo ng kadana, niya ikaw, pilara edad ni Mochoy, o tsintaan niyo sa kalang sa kalibutan, si Satanas, ga-obserbar na kaladlaw si Hitler, iyang gi-influence, ay kumpensa. Kung ingunta nga, wak mo nang ipon, roaring lion manggali, gi-describe lang sa Bible, he is like a roaring lion, gangulob, nangita kan unon. Kung kumukumpensa ka giyawa, mura kag dayaper, nagikunis-kunis sa yawa. But of course, Satan is nothing compared to our God. He's nothing if Jesus is with us. So, bisan pag naa si Jesus, ang gusto ni Jesus nga dikit na sa iya pero minti. We have the emblem of suffering and shame the cross. Kaya ang mga tao, ang kriminal sa unang panahon, ilansang sa cross. Maunang kaulawan sa una, pinaka makauulaw kayo ang kamatayon, kay hubuan ka. Makita imong idoy kung dako ba o gamay. Yet Jesus weaponized that emblem of pain, suffering, and shame, and death. Iyan ang gihimong armas. O kana nga armas, iyan ang gihatag na to. Carry your cross as I carry mine. That means, what's the point of carry your cross, Father? Sakripisyo ba? Kinalamanti ko ka sakripisyo sa imong unod nun, mga kailibgon. We are being instructed by Christ to carry our cross and hold on to it. Embrace and hold on to it like a good soldier. A good soldier na ang ina takin-takin yung 45, yung Armalite, pero 20. Kasabaan na sila. Bisa pag malibang na sila, dala nila ang Armalite. Kita mga pare at itong mga cross. Suloobo mo na itong misa. Di ba? Niya, ang tutang merkado, maulaw kita mga cross-cross gali. Carry your cross. That means be willing to sacrifice for the sake of righteousness, for the sake of our love for God. 
and hold on to it. Tungod kay atong kontra, mabuntog lamang nato pinaagi ni Ginoong Kristo, pinaagi sa armas nga iyang gihatag kanato nga mao ang cross nga atong daladalahon matag-adlaw. Palihog manindog, please